everybody. My name is Tamala Jones slash Taraji P. Henson slash Regina Hall slash Tracy Jones, who's supposed to be my sister, who isn't really, but we'll get on that. That part. <laughs> my name is Sharon, and I'm an alcoholic with a splitting headache. Sure. Something about that little girl without a mom I'm sick and the family's blood dry from all the hospital bills. I think I'm supposed to help. Hi, Sharon. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to come by and give you this. The name of the movie is Ordinary Angels, and it is based on a true story coming out February 23rd. Um, it's incredible. It's one of my, my most, I'm just very, very proud of this movie. This did happen. This did happen to a family, Ed Schmidt's family. Um, his wife first died of a rare liver disease, and then not too long after, his baby ended up having the same rare liver disease and was fighting for her life. And it took this woman, Sharon, played by Hilary Swank, to, to, to come together and get the town together and get everybody involved to help save this little girl her life, because she hadn't even been here long enough to say, I'm, I'm about to die. So we all fought for her, <laughs> like I, I really was there, but the whole town fought for her. Rose definitely didn't exist, but you know, to embellish the movie a little bit and give it some ground to get people to really understand, they did give a counterpart, which was Rose. And I basically tailored Rose after my grandmother, because my grandmother, Olivia Laverne Jones, who's no longer with us, she was that. Open home to everybody. Never met, met a stranger. If you didn't have a place to go for holidays, you were welcome at grandma's house. And um, she would be there for you. It didn't even have to be a holiday. But one thing my grandma did not tolerate was BS. So if you came in chaotic, she, uh, 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 we ain't gonna do that. Sit down. Let me know why you're doing this, what you're feeling. I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't and how you should be, you know, uh, living your day, day-to-day -day life, and trying to be a better person. Um, and Rose is that for Sharon. Rose is no nonsense. She's her ride or die, but hey, if it's not right, it's not right, and we need to fix it. I have to credit our director, John Gunn, because it was his vision um, that he saw after he read the script like the rest of us, and this is the story and how he wanted to tell it. So. He was very specific with his directions, but he was layering everything. He built and built and built until he got what he wanted, and we moved on. Is it today? OK, we'll be there. You want to go on an adventure? Yeah. Let's you go. The roads haven't been plowed. The airport's closed. Honey, listen, it's it's too dangerous. I have to make it. This is our last chance. If we don't take it, Michelle dies. You know, Canada, we shot most of this in Canada because the actual story happened in 1994 during a terrible snowstorm in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and so we went to Winnipeg to shoot this, and Canada was very strict about COVID laws and you had to be vaccinated coming into their country and you had to wear your mask and different things. Even when we were lighter with our rules, Canada was still on it. They were serious and they did not play. And I really appreciated that because I, I felt free for a moment, you know? I can go out and not have to wear my mask uh, uh, unless I was, you know, instructed to. We, did, we definitely did that on set. Um, but it was, I felt confident because I knew they weren't allowing things to spread the way things were spreading so fastly. And you're asking us to reduce the family's medical bills due to hardship. No, I'm asking you to erase them, all of them. <laughs> Was that funny? Let me show you something. Ed's daughter made this for school, a family tree, simple drawing made by a child. How one life leads to another, or in this case, how one death leads to another. Miss Stevens, please. Teresa Schmidt came to this hospital for help. Now, the good doctors did their best to save her, but they couldn't, and she died, leaving behind a heartbroken husband and a very ill little girl, Michelle. Well, I, I read the book, and I couldn't stop turning the pages. And usually, I got to take a break, because I read so much, you know? But I couldn't put it down. I finished it, and I cried, and I felt everything. 
And then when I was able to see my grandmother, and I saw my grandmother in Rose, I saw my grandmother. I saw my grandmother in Rose. I saw my grandmother in Sharon. I saw my, you know, characteristics of my grandmother in multiple characters uh, in there. But the thing when they said John Gunn is directing, I was like, oh yeah, I really love how he tells stories. And then Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Story Company, I love that they do a lot of faith-based movies. And I'm very strong about having a, a strong sense of faith. I mean, I did stare at death right in the face. <laughs> so my faith is extremely strong. And then they said Hillary Swank. So I'm like, oh, you ain't got to twist my arm. Million dollar baby Hillary Swank, I'm in there. I know I left after watching this movie feeling like a, a ton of boulders had been lifted off of me. I felt more hopeful about change. And I felt that you know, we can all be ordinary angels if we try. If we go out and maybe once a week or once a month do some sort of random act of kindness to a complete stranger, that's my time to be an ordinary angel. I feel like just now, especially with this movie, I'm just now getting my feet wet. I'm just now getting the stuff that's gonna make people see me as a complete whole actress and not put me in one category. It's, like, it's always often talked that, you know, women of color and disparity and money. Are those, are those things that you've had to deal with or I'm appreciative what I got and you know, I'm, I'm just okay. Here's the thing, this is a business, right? And we'll, we are all artists. When have you in history known every single artist to be making crap loads of money? Until you do, then you will. You got to keep pushing, just like the painter, just like the musician. You got to keep pushing until you get that product. And they're like, oh my God. And they start throwing money at you. Right. You know, that's, that's what this is all about. If you are here as an, an artist, then you have to look at it as artistry. I understand a lot of the complaints about not making equal money. We can solve that easily. Um, that's what we have unions for. If we together uh, as black actresses or women actresses together, if we all women feel the same way, if we get enough people together, we can go to our union reps and say, hey, great that you, you figured it out for everybody during the strike, but there's this issue. Can you help us with this? Um, it's a way. There's rules to, to this engagement. There's a way you can go about it and make it happen and get what you need out of it. But we have to be willing to come together to make that happen. There's powers and numbers. Unfortunately, if you're singular and you're saying this and then someone else says this, it doesn't come off like there's an issue that needs to be resolved. It comes off in a negative way, in a negative tone. And we don't want that. And I understood what these ladies had to say, and, I, and they were 100% right. But the way to go about it, even what Vivica had to say, I needed more support from her for, for the other ladies because I understand both sides. I understand, yes, the artistry side, and, and we don't have, we're not getting what we need. And then I understand, uh, but we're going to do it anyway. And then I understand, look, I've been here this long and I, and, I, and I get that. But it's a business. And I've used this metaphor before. If I go into Starbucks, which I love, I love good Starbucks. And I look in there and I'm like, oh, you got your cups on the left. I don't really like how you have the cups on the left. For me, that doesn't work for me. Move them on the right. It's distracting. And I feel like if you get them on the right, you can get more customers and we'll come in and support not just me by myself, they're not gonna hear that. But if I get a group of people that feel the same way I do, and we go in and say, let me speak to your supervisor. We don't mean anything by this, but it's uncomfortable for us to see the cups on the left. Why don't you move them to the right? Because we all think that if you do that, you're gonna get more traction, you're gonna get more customers and more sales, if you do that. Um, then you, you create movement. Maybe we don't get it all the way to the right. Maybe they, the supervisor says, let's put it in the middle for now and see what happens then. You know, but powers and numbers. Stand up for what you believe in. Right. 
You know, Dorothy Dandridge was the first um, person who fought for black actresses to get more money. You know, she said, Ava Gardner gets this. How come I can't get that? You know, I'm not going to do it if I can't get what Ava gets. And she got it. Right. You know, she get, did that for us. So whatever these ladies are getting now, know that someone fought for you to get that. Now it is our job to fight for the people behind us to get something more. How they gonna bet on us like we some dogs at a racetrack? Cause they not human, baby. I mean, I know it may seem like it. I mean, we both eat and breathe the same. But look at a brother like Buns. Does he act human? But you just slept with Buns. Like I said, they're only good for one thing. What stands out the most? I would say everything in the beginning. Because remember, I'm barely 21 uh, when I get booty call. And then after booty call, I get someone, this beautiful woman of color saying, hey, come audition for me. I want you on my show. That was Yvette Lee Bowser for For Your Love. So the adrenaline, the excitement, the butterflies is why I say in the beginning. But then I had gone through a strike. I think it was in 2004 or something like that. And I had two homes in Los Angeles at the time and I couldn't afford and I was scared I was gonna lose the house and I, you never wanna lose a house to the bank. Um, and thank God I, I didn't lose it. I was able to sell it. I had to pay to get out of that, but I was struggling. And when Castle came, they didn't even write that for an African-American actress. It was just written for a Caucasian actress. I was desperate. I was like, see if they'll see me. I could do this. You know, like, I want to do this. And they saw me, and I booked it. And it was just in the pilot, a guest star role, possible recurring. And uh, the beginning meets the middle at this time. I'm in New York, I'm shooting. Me and the lead, Stana Kadic, we, we running out of underwear. So we like, let's go to Victoria's Secrets. And we do, and when I walk in, I'm literally in there to get panties and bras. And the kids were like, and then they were like, can I get a picture with you? Can I, can I, can I? And Stana sees this and she's like, who are you? And I was like, girl, I, I've done a lot of movies for my people back in the day. The kids, re they remember me from that. And she went and told the executive producer. So when it got picked up, they were like, we want her as a series regular. I have been blessed to have a recurring role on 911 Lone Star. So I will be back, God willing. Um, uh, and also, I've been asked to come back to Uncoupled, uh, playing opposite Tish Campbell once again, my girl. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And then I'm auditioning. I still audition. I'm auditioning to see what's going to stick and what will fly, you know. So we're getting the lineup now. We're getting it together. Um, <laughs> my damn old earring. Okay, everybody, shut your mouth. Turn that down. I need it quiet. I have to concentrate. What's going on? Kelvin, don't you work my last nerve. Please take away from this movie that um, you can be an ordinary angel. You can help out. And when you help other people, you are actually helping yourself. That's not why you should do it. But you are helping yourself. It's a therapy. It's a chemical release that happens in your body when you put a smile on someone else's face or when someone gives you tears of joy and say, hey, you just made my day. You don't have to dig in your pocket to do that. You could just speak a kind word or do something kind. Um, and just remember, no one can do it alone. So if you need help, ask. That's how you receive it. And if you're somebody that's seeing somebody struggle and you don't see them asking for help, why don't you ask them do they need anything and if they're okay? This is the time to do it. And I know we don't trust each other right now because we feel like everybody went crazy, but we didn't. We've all been traumatized. That's not crazy, that's trauma. How did it become your responsibility to save her? Because I'm here. Because I can.
OrdinaryAngels.movie. If you have a dollar to donate, please do it. We turn $1 into $100. We are raising $10 million to take care of hospital bills for anybody that had a donor situation. The bills are outrageous. We want to help you. Um, and we want you to be Ordinary Angels and help someone. So if you have it, if you don't, we understand. $1 will make a difference. Um, this is Tamla Jones and you have just been buzzed. Hello. It's a good chance she won't make it. Sharon, have you thought about what that could do to you? Of course I have, but I gotta try. Why? How is it your responsibility to save her? Because I can, because I'm here. Someone's gotta do something.